go. It's a red fish right there, guys. Guarantee it. Right along the oysters. Let me see what we got here. Yep, nice little red. There we go. Hey, what's going on, Saucer Arm Nation? Welcome back to another video. In today's tip, we're gonna be going over everything concerning popping corks. So I'm gonna be talking about exactly where you wanna fish these systems. And also at the end of the video, I'll go over the terminal tackle and then what type of rod and reel or just general setup to use to have the best benefit when using one of these. All right, guys, so the very first thing that you want to do when you fish popping corks is figure out what type of area you're going to fish. Now, my absolute favorite areas to fish popping corks are going to be flooded flats, especially ones that have structure. So areas that have, you know, anywhere from two to about four and a half, maybe five feet of water depth, that's really, really good. In areas that I fish, I have big tidal swings. so. Flooded flats are a really, really good place to go. So if you can find areas that are gonna have creek mouths, oysters, and flooded structure, that's typically a really good place. Because one, this popping cork will allow you to float over a lot of that structure, especially once the water gets a little bit higher. But then also, you can just run a grass line or a bank line that's got shrimp, mud minnows, finger mullet, all of those things that typically those predators are going after. You can use one of those under a popping cork. And the areas that I don't really use a popping cork are gonna be areas around docks uh, or deep holes and bends and creeks and stuff like that. And the reason why is because that's when you can use a slip float. I just made a video about that and control your depth because with these, you typically only have anywhere between, you know, 15 inches to 30 inches of a liter on one of these before it starts getting really cumbersome to throw. And you really don't wanna to be too far away from this cork because it's loud and noisy for a reason and that's to attract those fish close to your bait. So that's exactly the type of area you want to go to guys is somewhere that's got some flooded or more shallow water that's you know five feet or less and that's typically a really really good place to start. The other reason I really like flooded flats is because typically that's where you get a lot of good current flow. So if you can find a flat that's really close to or adjacent to a main channel that water speed is actually gonna be going just as fast, if not a little bit faster on a lot of those flats because it's basically a quick shelf and then all of a sudden that water is gonna push over it. And when that happens, that's when all of that bait gets pushed across that flat. And that's where those predators are typically waiting and hunting because it's a lot easier to hunt and find prey items when it's a lot shallower of water compared to them having to find it in six to eight feet of water. So if you can go and find those areas that are a little bit more shallow, especially ones that bait's gonna get funneled to right off of a main channel, that's a really good spot to check out as well. All right guys, so now that we know what type of area that we wanna be fishing with these systems, let's go ahead and just get into the rod and reel setup and the terminal tackle and have a quick tip for you on also how to not get your line tangled, especially if you're using braid like most of us do now. Okay guys, so just starting out from the rod and reel setup, what I have here is a medium heavy rod. Uh, this is a TFO professional. I do recommend at minimum using a medium, and if it is a medium, I would err on the side of it being a heavier rod. The reason why is these systems are pretty heavy, and depending on what brand you use, this is a four horseman, you can easily start getting up to past three quarters of an ounce of weight. So when that happens, if you've got too flimsy of a rod when a fish strikes, you're not gonna be able to get a very good hook set additionally when you're popping this thing all day long it's going to get very very tiring you want one that's got a little bit more of a heavier butt section to it but a soft tip kind of a moderate or moderate fast tip and that's usually really really good for this type of system and the reel that I've got on here today is gonna to be a BG3000, but I would just recommend any 3000 series type reel because if you get a reel that's a little bit lighter, like a 2500 or even less, a lot of times, especially when you're using a medium heavy rod, it's just not gonna balance very well. And you've got a pretty heavy system right here with the popping cork, plus you know your bait and all at the end. So a heavier reel is gonna help balance out this whole rod and this whole system. Now for line, I typically prefer 15 pound braid. And the reason why is for this setup here, I use this also with Carolina rigs around docks and a lot of other setups. And there's no reason to have, you know, multiple rods for one thing when all you have to do is snip it and you could easily turn this into a Carolina rig. But 15 pound braid still casts very, very well, especially with this heavy cork on it. You'll have no problem really throwing this thing over hundred feet. All right, now moving into the actual cork itself, guys. So if you can see right here, I've actually got an FG knot. 
right here, just like we normally do, try to get that in the camera. So this is actually connected to 30 pound mono, and that is before it gets to my cork. And the reason why I do this, guys, is if you've ever used braid, especially when it gets wet, it gets really, really soft, and it's easily to get wrapped around the tip of your rod or even the popping cork itself. And it's super, super annoying, especially when you're making a lot of pops because that braid can easily just wrap around this cork and get completely tangled up. Or if you have a fish on or a trout that's going crazy, this braid will get all around this cork. But having this stiffer mono, 30, even 40 pound if you want, uh, can really, really help eliminate that. And it helps kind of push that braid out a little bit more back towards the rod tip. And this right here is not gonna fold up on you near as bad. So quick tip on that, just put some 30 pound or 40 pound mono on here, and it's really gonna help eliminate a lot of tangles. All right, now moving into the actual cork itself, the one I have here is just gonna be a four horseman popping cork. We sell these in our shop, they're awesome. Um, but guys, this is the oval one. I also really like the cupped one. Um, if I'm fishing for redfish a little bit more, I typically like the cupped one a little bit better. And trout, I typically like the egg shape. But everybody's got their preference. That's just me, that's what I like to use. Now going down here, guys, it's already got a swivel on it. As you can see right there, comes with the cork. That way when anything's spinning or you're doing a lot of cast, you're not getting everything all tangled up and line twist. Now moving down guys, I've just got 20 pound Andy monofilament right here. And the leader length typically, what I like to do, it depends on the area or the portion of the tide you're fishing, but I typically like an 18 to 30 inch leader at most. So 20 pound Andy monofilament is typically what I use um, and a 30 inch leader at most. And sometimes I'll even go down to about 12 inches in some really, really shallow areas and shallow flats. And going down to the terminal tackle, guys, you can use anything under these. You can use live bait, you can use artificial. My favorite to use is typically gonna be a shrimp presentation. Um, I actually like the smaller size shrimp, just like what we have the Power Prime Junior over the bigger size. I tend to just get more hookups um, with the smaller size. The uh, 2.0, whether it's in the Slam Shady color or the Gold Digger or any paddle tail of your choice that you really like, that three and a half inch or smaller typically does a little bit better in most cases from what I've noticed when it comes to catching numbers of fish. And the other important thing that I wanna go over is gonna be the actual weight and the jig head or the weighted hook. So the best weight that I've found in at least my waters where there's moderate to heavy current is gonna be a one eighth of an ounce. Now, if you're in an area that has you know little to no current um, and the cork's not really gonna be moving much, you could probably lighten up to a 1 16th ounce. But that one eighth ounce definitely, whether it's live bait or artificial like I have here, like the Power Prime Junior, that typically is the best weight and I get a lot of hits on the way down because it's not too fast, but it's also fast enough where in between pops, you know your lure is gonna get back down and it's actually gonna stretch the system out to do another pop because all you're wanting to do is for each pop, this is gonna come up just like this and then it's gonna come back down and as soon as it gets down, you can go ahead and make another pop. Another really good thing you can do is just dead drift it. That works really well too. Um, sometimes if it's a windy day, just throw the cork out and let it sit. Even with an artificial, uh, Coach Matt Lanier and I just did that recently. He was uh, messing around getting a sandwich or something, all of a sudden his cork went down. It's because we were in some windy and some choppier areas, which are really, really good to use these systems because your bait's gonna get noticed because they're loud as well. But this cork will move this shrimp if it's a little bit wavy and windy. So that's just one more thing to think about. Okay, so that's it for the tips today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like using a popping cork or if there's a favorite one that you have or you like using them in a different area that I did not mention, definitely be sure to leave them in the comments below. But if you have any questions on the terminal tackle or any of that stuff that we went over, definitely be sure to check it out at fishstrong.com. If you're new to Salt Strong, just know we're the number one online fishing club out there because we actually guarantee we're gonna help you catch more fish, not only with tips and in-depth courses, but also our new Smart Fishing Spots app that actually tells you exactly where the fish will be feeding as well as the best times of day to fish there. You'll also save tons of money with tackle discounts and make tons of new fishing friends in the Insider community. So thanks again for watching and we hope to see you in the Insider community soon.